The last section introduced us to something we hadn't yet seen before, promises. In this section, we're going to dive deeper into promises to really understand what they are, how to use them, and how to create them on our own. Angular provides a really great built-in service called Dollar $Q that helps facilitate the creation and use of promises. I've gone ahead and included Dollar $Q as a dependency to my controller. Now a promise is simply an asynchronous method that either resolves to a value or rejects with a reason. The dollar Q service allows us to create these promises in one of two ways. The first way is with the dollar Q constructor, and that is that we simply invoke that dollar Q constructor method. That constructor accepts a function as a parameter, and that parameter function accepts two parameters itself. The first is the resolution if the promise gets fulfilled. The second is the rejection if the promise does not get fulfilled. Within this function, we'll then define the promise body. And we're going to go ahead and add an asynchronous method called setTimeout. The setTimeout method accepts two parameters. The first is the function that it's set to run, and the second is the time in milliseconds that it delays before running that function. Now it's important to point out that the setTimeout method is completely independent of promises. We're using it in this case to demonstrate the asynchronous nature of promises by giving some lag time before the promise resolves or rejects. And whether the promise resolves or rejects will be dictated by the body of that function we pass into the setTimeout method. So in that body, we're going to take in that parameter x that we provided in our async square function and evaluate whether or not it's a number. If it is a number, then we're going to resolve the promise to the value equal to that number times itself. If it's not a number, then we're going to reject it with the explanation that the parameter must be a number. And that's all there is to it. We've created a promise using the $Q constructor. Now $Q provides one other way for us to create promises, and that is with the defer method. This method returns an object that includes methods to set the value of our resolution and the reason of a rejection, as well as a promise object. Let's resolve our promise to the cube of the x parameter if that x parameter is a number. Otherwise, let's reject it with the same reason that we used in our constructor example. Now that we have our resolve and reject set, we're ready to return our promise. Now that we have our promises defined, let's take a look at how to use them. And I'm going to use them in an activate function in my controller. Now there are several ways we can call promises, especially when we have multiple promises to be called. The first is just by calling the promise itself and then calling the then method of that promise, which accepts two functions as parameters. The first function is if the promise resolves. The second function is if the promise rejects. If the promise resolves, then we'll just simply log that data, in this case the square value, to the console. If it rejects, then we'll log that error to the console. One thing that may be nice for readability's sake is to break up our rejection and resolution functions into two separate method calls. And we'll demonstrate how to do this by calling the async cube function. In this case, I'm going to call the then function and pass in only one function to that method, which is my resolution function, and then call the catch function as a chained method call to the then function. And that catch function accepts the method that I want to invoke if the promise rejects. And finally, I can chain the finally method, which will always run regardless of whether the promise rejects or resolves. Now we see that when we have multiple promises to be called, our activate function can get a little bulky. It would be nice if there was a method that allows us to call all of our promises and then provide an array of those promise resolution values after the promises have resolved. And in fact, $Q allows us to do just that. Using the all method of the $Q service, we can pass in an array of promises to be called and then call the then and catch functions as we normally would. And the then function will return an array of resolution values that correspond to the order in which the promises were called. And similarly, we can simply log to the console the reason if any of the promises reject. And in our browser's console, we see the result of each of these promises. The first async square promise, 
resolves to the value of 100. The first async cube promise rejects with the reason being that the parameter must be a number before finally printing out the message that we're done computing the cube. And then the $q.all method resolves both promises, the first being the square and the second being the cube.